Right, are you ready for some maths? Now I want to show you that you should always lose 50% of your business on price. You want to be charging a price that 50% of your possible customers cannot afford and will not pay. 50%. Now I know that's scary, but let's do some examples. I'm going to do three examples and we'll see what happens. So the first one is selling burgers. So let's suppose you're going to just sell burgers in your pub and we want to know what price will only 10% of customers pay, what price will 25% pay, 50% and 90%. So I'm going to make up some numbers. I'm probably wrong. If you don't like my numbers, you can put your own in here, but I just want to show you how you might work this out. So what price would 10% pay? Well, I'm going to say £19 for a burger. Now you might think that's really cheap. I don't know. Or you might think it's ridiculously expensive. But around here where I live, only about 10% of people are going to pay 19 quid for a burger. But 10% probably will. Now, what about 25%? I think probably a quarter of people will pay 14. It's a bit steep, but I think reasonable amount of people will pay that. The 50-50 point I would say is probably about 11. I think about half of the people will, will happily pay 11. And 90% of people will buy the burger if it's let's say four pounds or something like that. Um, so let's assume these are your numbers. Now we need one other number, we need the cost. So what does it cost to make a burger? Well, I've no idea, but I'm gonna say three pounds. I don't know just for the material and the cooking. It might be more actually, but let's suppose it's three pounds. So the profit you're making on the burger then is gonna be 16 pounds for this one, uh, 11 for this one, eight for this one, and only one pound for that one. So what's our total gonna be? Well, our total profit, if we're, let's suppose we've got 100 customers coming in. So that means we're gonna sell 10 burgers, 25, 50, and 90 burgers out of our 100 customers. It doesn't matter whether you've got 200 customers or 500 or only 10 customers, because we're just comparing these different options for the same number of customers. But let's keep it simple, keep the math simple. Say we've got 100 customers coming in. So 100 customers, we're making 16 pounds profit on each one, so that's 160 pounds. That's how much we make. If we go for the Ferrari option, what about 25% of people? 25 people decide the burger for 11 pounds. So that's 200, I think it's 275 pounds we make. 50% uh, of people decide to buy the burger for 11 pounds. We're making eight. So eight times 50 is 400. And finally, we go for the cheap and cheerful one where 90% of people buy the burgers. We love the sound of that, except we're only making one pound a burger. We make 90 quid. So what is our best strategy? And I think you can immediately see it's to go for the 11 pound option where we make 400 pounds. We go for the option 11 pounds. It's where 50% of people will pay the price. That's my first example. Now, let's do another example. Let's imagine that you are a, um, a personal trainer who goes around to people's houses and forces them to do press-ups while you watch. So we'll have the personal trainer. What price should you charge? So we want to know the 10%, the 25%, the 50% and the 90%. Now, I don't really know much about personal trainers, I've got to admit. My gut feel is that you could get away with a maximum of probably 60 pounds. I think 10% of people might pay 60 quid for a really good personal trainer. But maybe that's, maybe that's too high. I mean, I wouldn't pay that, but then I'm not in the top 10% of people who are incredibly rich and incredibly keen to have you as a personal trainer. But let's say it's that. You can put your own numbers into this if you don't like them. What would a quarter of people pay? Maybe 35? I think there's often a big difference between the 25 and the 10, by the way, because those top 10% of people don't care what things cost. They like you, they're gonna have you, whatever. And, and maybe people would pay more than 19 pounds for a burger, you know, perhaps I underestimated that a bit. Anyway, let's say it's 35 for this. Um, what price would half 
of the possible customer's pay for a trainer. Let's suppose it's 25 quid. I think surely half the possible people would pay that for a trainer to come to their house for an hour and help them to become fit. And 90% I think would do it if it was say 15. Who knows? Right, then we've got the question of what is the cost? Well, let's say it's a tenner. I think it might be more than that by the time you've driven there. Uh, and it's hard to value the cost of your time because there's the opportunity cost of what you could be doing instead. But let's suppose your costs of sort of petrol and things are 10 pounds. So that would mean then that the profit you're making is 50 on this one, 25 on this one, only 15 on this one and only a fiver on your cheapest one. So if we get 10 customers out of a possible 100, 10 customers and we're making 50 pounds, then that's 500. Um, if we get 25 customers and we're making 25, that's 200, no, that's, uh, that's 625 pounds. We're gonna make by doing that option. You can see we're making half the profit, but we're selling more than twice as many. So it, it is slightly more, that is right. Um, if 50% of people pay our price, so we get 50 customers, but we're only making 15 pounds, that's 750. And if 90% of people hire us, so we do 90 jobs, then we're, but we're only making five pounds for each one, that's 450. And interestingly, to get that 450, which is less than these numbers, we're having to work much harder as well. So there is an argument actually for going for the 10% because you're making nearly as much as those others and doing a lot less work. But nevertheless, if you want to maximize your profit, you would go for the 750, which is where we are charging 25 pounds. And that's the 50% point again, isn't it? Now let's do one more example. This one's quite close to my heart. I do know a bit about it as well. This would be a day of training in a company for a group of 20 people, let's say. How much would a company pay for this? How much would the 10% richest customers pay? How much would a quarter of my possible customers pay? 50% and 90%. Well, I'm not certain about these numbers. I've experimented a certain amount, but you never really know. But I would say that the top 10% would probably pay, I don't think they would pay 3,000 for a day, although I know trainers who charge that. But let's say, I know they would definitely pay 2,000. So I'm gonna say 2,600 is the price that 10% of customers would pay for a day of training for a group of people. What price would a quarter of my customers pay? And I would say it's probably 1,800. Pretty sure a quarter of them would pay that. 50% uh, will pay, let's say 1,400. Definitely half of my customers would pay 1400 but I think probably half of them wouldn't. And then what price would 90% of people pay if you quoted it, well, let's say 700 quid or something like that. I mean, there'd still be 10% who wouldn't pay that, but pretty much everyone would pay that. So let's say those are the numbers. And by the way, you could find these numbers out by a bit of research. You could, for example, um, interview a whole load of trainers, but better than that would be to experiment and quote all sorts of different prices and just see what your hit rate is. Now, I don't get that many inquiries coming in for training. Uh, and they tend to be big and occasional when they come in. But if you are selling lots of little things like burgers, you could easily experiment on the price and just vary it and see what happens. Anyway, back to training. Uh, what should we say the cost is of a training course? Well, let's say it's 500 pounds by the time you've sold it, which is going to require a bit of you know, perhaps travel, visiting customers. You've got to actually go there, you've got to drive there, probably stay in a hotel the night before, and then you've got a certain amount of materials. And then there's the cost of your time, which is hard to price. But let's say it's costing 500. That would mean that the profit we're making on these would be 2,100, uh, 1,300, 900, and 200. So which is the best option? Well, this one here, we're going to sell 10. Suppose we get 100 inquiries a year. We're only going to sell 10, but we're making 2,100 on each one. So therefore, we're going to be making uh, 21,000 in total, aren't we, times 10? So 21K by doing that. If we're charging 1,800, we're going to sell 25 out of those 100 inquiries. 
So 25 times 1300 is 25 times 1300 is 32 and a half K with 33. Then if we sell 50 at 1400, we're making 900 profit on each one. So 50 times 900 is 45 K. And finally, if we are selling them for 700, we, we're going to sell 90 of those, but we're only making 200 on each. So 90 times 200 is 18K. And you can see that yet again, the best option is the 45K here, which is, means we're charging 1400 and we're getting 50% of our inquiries. Well, again, I'm a little bit tempted to only earn 33 and do half the work. So the 25% option is always a little bit tempting, isn't it? It wasn't so good for the burgers, but it was quite interesting for the personal trainer. But the top one is 50%. Now, you could do as many of these as you like. These were just three random things I picked. Do your own figures. Do your own research. Try some numbers. Do it right now. Just make up some numbers. For whatever you do, what price do you think 10% of people would pay? And what price do you think 90% would pay in 50 and 25? Do the numbers and see what happens. And I bet you end up deciding that you should be losing 50% of your business on price. Now that's painful. That means that you're going to have to take a lot of rejection. But it's okay because in the end, you're going to be maximizing your profit.